Jesus was stripped of his clothing and his hands tied to a post above his head. The Roman legionnaire steps forward with a short whip consist consisting of several heavy leather thongs with two small balls of lead attached to the end of each. The heavy whip is brought down with full force again and again across Jesus' shoulders, his back, and his legs. At first, the heavy thongs cut through the skin only. Then as the blows continue, they cut deeper into subcutaneous tissues, producing, producing first an oozing blood from the capillaries and the veins of the skin, and finally spurting arterial bleeding from vessels and the underlying muscles. The skin of his back is hanging in long ribbons, and the entire area is an unrecognized mass of torn, bleeding tissue and flesh. Wow. He endured this right. for us. When it is determined by the centurion in charge that Jesus is near death, the beating is finally stopped. The half-fainting Jesus is untied and is allowed to slump to the stone pavement, wet, drenched in his own blood. The Roman soldiers threw a robe across his shoulders and placed a stick in his hand for a scepter. A small bundle of flexible branches covered with long thorns is pressed into his scalp. Again, there is mass bleeding, for the scalp is a very vascular area. After mocking him and striking him across the face, the soldiers take the stick from his hand and strike him across the head, driving the thorns deeper into his skull. Finally, the robe is torn from his back. Now just imagine, he is a mass of open flesh, and they've put this robe on him, so you know that robe was sticking to his open flesh and they snatched it off. How many of you have ever taken a Band-Aid off and how bad that hurts? Right. Now just imagine a whole robe over his beaten, torn body being snatched off. Again, he's in excruciating pain. He allowed this for us. Amen. Again, Jesus was brought before Pilate by an angry mob shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate orders his crucifixion under duress a man who was found guilty of nothing. The heavy beam of the cross is then tied across his shoulders, and the procession of the condemned Christ, two thieves, and the execution detail begins its slow journey. The weight of the heavy wooden beam, together with the shock produced by excessive blood loss, is too much. He stumbles, and he falls. The rough wood of the beam gouges into the lacerated skin and muscles of the shoulders. He tries to rise, but he can't. An onlooker is selected to carry the cross as Jesus follows behind. At Golgotha, the beam is placed on the ground, and Jesus is quickly thrown backward with his shoulders against the wood. The legionnaire finds a depression at the front of the wrist. He drives a heavy square wrought iron nail through the wrist deep into the wood. Doof! Doof! Quickly he moves to the other side and repeats the same action, being careful not to pull the arms too tightly, but to allow some flexion and movement. The beam is then lifted in place, and at the top there's a sign that's nailed, and it reads, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The left foot is now pressed backward against the right foot with both feet extended down, toes, toes are down, and the nail is driven into the arch of the foot. Again, <laughs> our Savior is now crucified. As he slowly sags down with more weight on the nails and the wrists, excruciating pain shoots along the fingers and up the arms to explode in the brain. The nails and the wrists are putting pressure on the median nerves, and he pushes himself upward to avoid the stretching torment. He places his full weight on the nails in his feet. Again, there is searing agony 
and the nail tearing through the nerve between the metal tarsal bone. He did all this for us. As the arms fatigue, great waves of cramp sweep over the muscles, knotting them in deep, relentless, throbbing pain. With these cramps comes the inability to push himself upward, hanging by his arms. The pectoral muscles are unable to act. Air can be drawn into the lungs, but cannot be exhaled. Jesus fights to raise himself in order to get even one short breath. Finally, carbon dioxide builds up in the lungs and in the bloodstream, and the cramps partially subside because he's done. He is able to push himself upward to exhale and bring in life-giving oxygen. Hours of this limitless pain, cycles of twisting, joint-rending cramps, Intermittent partial suffocation. Searing pain as tissue is torn from his lacerated back as he moves up and down the rough timber from which he is hanging. Jesus only uttered seven things while on the cross. The first, looking down at the Roman soldiers throwing dice for his seamless garments, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now, I want you to picture what I just told you about how he's hanging there, flesh hanging from his body. Like Reverend Nathaniel Johnson said, it, it was almost like just spaghetti, a mass of spaghetti up on that cross. Wow. He's been spat on and beaten and whipped. They didn't beat animals like that in that day. And he still says, forgive them. He, his compressed heart is struggling to pump heavy, thick, sluggish blood into the tissues. The tortured lungs are making a frantic effort to gasp in small gulps of air. The markedly dehydrated tissues send their flood of stimuli to the brain. Jesus gasps, I thirst. The body of Jesus is now in extremes and he can feel the chill of death creeping through his tissues. This realization brings out his sixth word, possibly more than just a little tortured whisper. It is finished. His mission of atonement has completed. Finally, he can allow his body to die. With one last surge of strength, he again presses his torn feet against the nail, straightens his legs, takes a deeper breath, and utters his seventh and last cry. Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. 